What's happening? Welcome back to Inside the Lines. I am your host, Johnny Pickleball. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about Kwong Duong taking down the king, the number one, Ben Johns in the round of 16 at the Hyundai PPA Masters in Palm Springs at Mission Hills Country Club. And as we get started through this, man, we're going to break it down. We're going to do all the things, but we got to start with the, some of the highlights to look for. Some of the things, some of the takeaways that we got from this match. And with Kwong Duong, let's start with him. Okay, you're gonna see during this match heavy serve. You're gonna and and let me preface by saying with that heavy serve, super awesome because we had about 35 mile an hour winds that day, 35 mile per hour gusts throughout the entirety of that match, going back and forth, and so made it very tricky. But that heavy serve of Kwong Dong, you're gonna be able to see. We're gonna see that cat and mouse game of Kwong Dong very much improved uh, from even previous tournaments. As he's you know he's still up and coming, but you're gonna see that as he's able to to kind of utilize that. And like I said, just some improvement. Um, and the biggest thing probably that you're going to notice with Kwong Dong is the disguise of his, of his shots. More so his forehand, being able to have like an open stance and, and being able to go left and right and mixing it up uh, throughout the entirety of the match, kind of keeping Ben Johns leaning one side or the other. Uh, so great job by him throughout the match. Uh, ben Johns, uh, as we get to him, the world number one, kind of what happened, what what happened to him in order to to go down to Kwong Dong, and obviously the uh, the wind not helping him, uh, as his, he probably missed a lot more serves and returns than normally uh, from what anyone normally does, especially Ben, you know, knowing him. But you know, some of the things that we look for that were amazing, and Ben Johns has one of the best backhand rolls, so we're gonna look for the backhand roll that he's able to utilize to even force this game, uh, force this match to go to three games. And we're going to look at, uh, you know, his cat and mouse game as well. He's able to kind of use that. And Ben Johns is the best cat and mouse player in the game. So we're going to be able to see him in action doing that, which, again, these things that got him to three uh, three games. But, you know, with the new serve rule, you're going to see some frustration setting in as well. And uh, But the biggest thing going forward in this match, the short returns that led to a lot of points and getting him on the defense during this match as well so just things to look for the short returns the missed returns uh miss serves even from ben and uh but let's get started let's just get right into the match let's break it down all right so let's go ahead and start it off game one we're at 2-2 early on here a couple missed serves missed returns like we were talking about but we're going to pick it up at 2-2 game one and in this clip we're going to see kwang dong and i'm going to go ahead and actually just get it going so we're going to have this started with him improving that cat and mouse game that we talked about earlier uh, ben with the drop, Kwong coming on up and able to just kind of get that backhand roll. I feel like that's such an improvement of what he used to do where he just would fire away down the line more than likely if it was there. But now incorporating the rolls into his game, uh, which is making it that much better. But yeah, on to the next clip. Let's go. So as we dive into this clip, let's go ahead and take a look. It's going to be Ben Johns hitting a short return and Kwong Dong able to take advantage of that and hit a nice passing shot winner. But that short return is what set him up in the first place. Let's go ahead and roll it. But you'll see the big heavy serve from Kwong and then able to step in. Ben having not only a short return, but actually having that return go right to the middle. So Kwong didn't even have to move hardly one thing, one foot except for forward, which enables him to have a lot more shape on the ball. Now, Kwong being on the far side of the court, He's having the wind at his back, so really putting pressure on Ben um, with him on the return as well, which is why those returns are going short early on in game one. We talked about those 35 mile per hour wind gusts. Well, there it is. So it's gonna make the return, which is already difficult in pickleball, even harder to get it deep. As we, in singles especially, you're looking for depth of serve, depth of return. And so with the, with the short return, Kwong able to step in, clean it up, big heavy winner. All right, so. Uh, with that point, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next clip, and um, we'll see what we got next. And so what we're going to look into next is Ben Johns, this whole sequence of events that we talked about, Ben missing returns, missing more serves than normal, as well as hitting short returns. So as we roll this clip, you're going to see the next like three points where he has a missed return, a, sh a missed serve, a short return. Well, you'll see for yourselves. Here we go. Let's go ahead and keep it going, but kind of very uncharacteristic for Ben Johns. But again, the wind playing those tricks. You'll see a miss serve right off the bat against Kwong Duong. And, um, you know, he's already, this is a very close match. And why this is important at this point is because he had the opportunity to maybe extend the lead. And now Kwong getting the, the opportunity to hit his heavy serve downwind and then having the short return enabling him to go forward on the ball. So 
there it is on the next point ben actually missing the return in general so all these things leading in game one with ben johns being up one now all of a sudden after those three points being down one and momentum all in favor of kuang duong and we'll see how we go ahead in the next clip of how he's going to keep going in this game to finish out game one all right, so we're going to go ahead and fast forward just a little bit. We have Kwong Dong uh, able to have game point here up 10-7 on Ben Johns. When you get these opportunities, obviously against Ben, you're going to need to take advantage. Now, Kwong also having the ability here to have the wind at his back as he needs to shape the ball. You'll see in the clip, he's able to win the game, but also he's going to use the wind to his advantage and a little bit of frustration from Ben Johns um, as, as we go through this. So let's go ahead and roll it. You'll see the, the another heavy serve from Kwong Duong, putting him on the advantage. And then uh, Ben able to try to come forward and just can't do anything with it. He kind of laughs as he walks away, does a light paddle tap. But he knows the wind played a huge factor so far and just trying to make those adjustments. But Kwong able to, to really get great shape on the ball uh, and keep it down. But it just kept moving. You'll see it in the replay. It's really tough right now. Really tough conditions that morning, even in Palm Springs. I mean, you could barely see anything in front of you. So uh, the wind conditions definitely playing a factor. And it, later on, we're also going to see the sun play a factor as well on some of the lobs that, that are going to take place. So uh, let's go right into the next clip and get right into game two. So as we start game two, Kwong Duong already up 1-0 in this game, but now he has to hit into the wind. And one thing that he does very well, uh, besides disguising the shots, he's actually creating more top spin and, and really hitting. I mean, he's hitting with all of his might, obviously, but to get through these windy conditions. But he's able to actually generate so much more top on it. And, and especially with his backhand, you're going to see right here. So let's go ahead and roll it, and, and then we'll, we'll go through it a little bit. But you'll see that in the... Um, the let cord so we have to go ahead and replay that obviously but um as he goes through here you'll see kwong really shape the ball here on the two-handed backhand able to get under the ball and then just hit straight almost straight up but through but he's asking having to generate so much more top spin because of this wind but to keep it down so he can actually hit harder and further um but yeah great play by him and it's one of those things he was able to make the adjustment more importantly when he made the side switch um, and yeah, we're going to see as he continues here in game two, you know, Ben Johns isn't going anywhere yet. This is about the time where you're going to see him start to, uh, step up. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right. So we're going to pick it up here. Kwong Duong already up three zero here in game two. But as I said, this is about the time where Ben has a bit of a sense of urgency to start, uh, making shots, start doing his thing, start dictating pace, start moving the ball around and creating cat and mouse points. This is one, and you'll see it in this clip, where Ben is still the best in the game at learning how to slow the pace down, dictate pace the way he wants it, and uh, just create opportunities for him to win the point, obviously, while making the other player kind of do what he wants. So let's go ahead and roll it, and you'll see what I mean. So there's the return from Kwong. With a nice volley, Ben able to go ahead and start the drops. And in electing to actually i'm gonna go ahead and pause so you're gonna see right there ben had the opportunity to probably drive a two-handed backhand but elected to just drop it coming forward give himself the easiest path to come in and now start the cat and mouse game let's go ahead and keep going you'll notice the back and forth a little bit and getting kuang duong off balance until he puts up a high dink and there's the famous backhand roll of ben johns even on the replay you'll see it of just pushing it and not even swinging as hard as he can but just pushing the ball past Kwong Duong out of his reach. And so another just great example of Ben Johns being able to not only start to kind of uh, get the momentum back in this game, but, you know, kind of just start to, to dictate that pace. But you'll see as we go through here that Kwong Duong's not done yet. He's got a little bit more fight to him here in game two, obviously, as it's still pretty early. So let's keep going. So now here in game two, Ben down in the last clip that we talked about, he was already down 3-0. So and, and after that point of the cat and mouse that kind of inspired him to get going, Ben's serving here at 4-4. So everything all tied up now. Now, one of the things that Kwong Duong was able to do was have strong volleys. Once he got up to the net, he was not only able to have a very compact motion to punch these volleys with a very precise spot of where he wanted on the court, but he also created depth. So he was able to move around Ben uh, left and right while maintaining depth of these volleys. Let's go ahead and run through it. You'll see Ben serving here at 4-4. Um, he's able to go ahead and have his serve. Kwong's going to come in very quickly as he does. And then there's the solid forehand volley. Another one rolling out wide and then going the opposite way while having great footwork. 
Uh, and so he just set himself up for going obviously inside out, inside out, and then going up to the opposite side of the court with Ben, which once you get him moving back on the baseline, you have at least some advantage. Uh, it's kind of surprised that Ben didn't try to throw up a lob, but you know, uh, with the wind at his back might be a little bit tricky to be on defense, but Kwong just too strong there on the volleys. Uh, for Ben to really do too much and even try to even get a paddle on the last one. So good work there from Kwong. Uh, but we'll see as this game obviously getting tighter here in game two and Ben John starting to uh, come alive. Let's check it out in the next clip. And in this next point, Ben John's already up 8-5 now in game two, trying to, he obviously has the momentum going in his favor, but we're going to see him once again go into that cat and mouse game. He forces you to play that cat and mouse game with by dictating pace as we talked about earlier and dictating the point and so you're going to see it right here you're going to see what kwong and kwong dong in this point you're going to see where he has the opportunity to potentially roll a ball instead of trying to go behind ben or move ben and so it's just you know we all like i said this much easier for me to 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 always say these things in the moment especially when you have the pressure of Ben Johns up at the net, it's going to be very difficult to execute the correct shot every single time. But let's go ahead and take a look. Ben, again, going to force your, his opponent to do what he wants. Really interesting. So there's the approach, and he's able to roll in. And Kwong Dong, instead of potentially rolling that ball, tries to lob Ben as he's able to just go ahead and hit the overhead. Not pot could have worked out. It's one of those that could have worked out really well for Kwong just because the sun is beaming right in Ben's eyes. Uh, but you know, not didn't work out for him that one. Ben trying to force that cat and mouse down Kwong Dong's throat, and uh, it actually worked out in his favor that time, giving Ben uh, even more of a lead here. And we'll see what else he can do in the next clip to try to close out game two. Here we go. All right, and in this point, as we talked about some of the highlights and keys from Ben Johns early on, the backhand roll. He's already up nine seven now in this game, trying to go ahead and just close it out and force that game three. So he's uh, Kwong Duong has, has woken up Ben Johns for sure here. And you're going to see him move in and use that backhand roll to his advantage. Let's go ahead and roll it. It's just one of those great things. If, if you're ever wanting to learn a uh, backhand roll from somebody, obviously Ben would be the guy to choose from because there it is just a cross court backhand roll kind of sets it up with a nice uh, forehand drive, able to close on that, knowing that Kwong Duong is stretched out wide and then coming in really quickly, that quick flick with the backhand and putting it away. And that's gonna seal his up. I mean, he's gonna go ahead and end up taking game two. So yeah, that's right. Time to go into game three. Let's do it. So we're gonna pick it up here in game three. Now keep in mind, whoever has been on the uh, on the far side has won the game. So Kwong Duong able to win game one. Ben John's able to win game two on that far side with the wind at their back. And we'll see what can continue with that. And obviously putting a lot of pressure on your opponent. In this clip, you're going to see Kwong Dong uh, able to disguise his shots a little bit better. So this is one thing that we, we highlighted, you know, early on in the video was that he's able to kind of create an either an open or closed stance, but hide where he's going to go, whether it's going to be cross court or down the line. The good news about that is it gets Ben leaning one way or the other and really not knowing where Kwong Dong's going to go. By having Ben Johns have the shorter returns that we talked about as well, that gives Kwong more time to hide and disguise that ball. Let's go ahead and roll it. You'll see what I mean. So here's the big heavy serve from Kwong Duong, as we talked about, kind of in that mid court. But then the shorter return, Kwong's able to close in a little bit, close his stance slightly, hold, and then pull uh, down the line on that one. But later on, you're going to see him go cross court and really great great shot by Kwong Duong able to utilize that short return and take them and make the most of it so uh you'll see in the next clip as this game goes on you know all the changes that start to happen between Ben between Kwong and now it's going to start getting a little bit more uh close towards the end so let's keep going so we're still in game three here it's four three Kwong Duong still leading um you're going to see in this clip this is, this is one of the new rule changes that happened, so I want to make sure to go over that with everybody. Ben's going to... I'm going to go ahead and roll it, and we'll, we'll talk about it, because Ben's going to go ahead and, and not miss this serve, but he's going to get called by the referee for having it too high. What I mean by that is the ball with the beta test that we ran at the Masters, the new rule was on the serve that the ball must be dropped below your hip bone, and then you must not be in it with a down where your palm must be down as you drop it, as well as not having them impart any spin on the ball with your hand. So whether you toss it up or anything like that, so it can't have any spin on it as well. So what they're saying to Ben during this clip is that his, his hand was high above his hip bone 
before he dropped it. And Ben didn't, uh, he thought it was low. He thought it was, he didn't think it was where it was supposed, he thought it was where it was supposed to be. The referees had to go through the clarification. You'll see through this clip how frustrated Ben is. He's saying he doesn't understand if, if he's raising his hand, he, he just wants complete clarification on the rule. As it is a beta test, if they continue with it, we shall see, you know, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it further. But in this motion, you'll see during the replay that Ben did have his hand above that hip bone before he released and so that's going to be a fault now there's no warning with these as well so but the biggest thing that's part of this is that as it's game three that can mentally hinder your performance going forward a little bit and it might make you start to think about certain things especially on your serve uh especially in the crucial game three where we're at so look for that even though he gets frustrated in this um that kind of ended up affecting him slightly as he started thinking about it a little too much on the serve so um bit of a bummer there for ben johns for sure but we'll see let's go into the last little clip here that we have of this match that went down to the wire here in game three here we go so for the last big clip that we have we're going to go over two different plays here okay it's already eight five here in game three and i really just want to highlight this one really quickly before getting to the match point and so with that kwang dong actually using the environment able to throw up a lob on ben johns while he looks right into the sun you're going to see it here I'm going to go ahead and roll this sucker because I just, I like what he was able to do here. Uh, he tried it earlier, didn't work out, but you know, he was able to kind of get in with the forehand, bend uh, with the neck cord. And then instead of trying to pass, he goes to the sun. <laughs> he, he relies on the sun. He just throws up a lob, Ben unable to hang, uh, handle it, and then just kind of puts it right into the net. So very great awareness there from Kwong Duong. And uh, you'll see even at match point here uh, on the next one, you'll see Kwong able to just relentlessly go with his ground strokes right at Ben Johns into the wind. Ben able to hold him off for just so long. But on the last one, Kwong hits the top of the net goes into the court game set match it's all over kwong able to take down ben johns with all the things that we talked about the disguising of shots making the adjustments when he went from the side to the other side into the wind against the wind and and ben johns having kind of an a slower start able to pick it up in game two but that slow start in the beginning of, of just not making the adjustment to the wind missing some some more serves and returns this was obviously the first match for ben johns it's been very well known that if you have a great opportunity it's against ben johns at his at his first match of the of the tournament and so this was that for him in the round of 16 for men's singles here at the masters and and kwang duong able to come out and really did a very very good job of hitting his spots um, I'm sure the next time they meet, and as I'm, I'm sure they will, Ben will make uh, adjustments and then probably go right into that cat and mouse game a little bit more as he was able to utilize that. But the wind making it very tricky and very difficult for him to be able to even do that. So uh, the wind definitely in favor of that person that is driving more uh, if you're hitting their spots. And, and like I said, Kwong able to do that. So a great match here for Kwong. Great opportunity for him to move forward here in this tournament. And uh, Ben Johns on to the next. I'm sure he's going to come out swinging at the next one at the uh, PBA Desert Ridge, I believe. So. Thank you for joining me here. Johnny Pickleball inside the lines. We will have another match. I'm sure coming at you pretty soon or, you know, whenever it is. So make sure to keep watching and make sure to keep staying with me here uh, for all these matches that we break down and go through. We'll see you soon.